Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well. I know I am. It's 4 a.m. here, and I'm getting ready to shoot a video for you guys. So, in this video, I'm going to present a whole bunch of information. I ended up shooting 42 different arrows over a chronograph, and I ended up shooting or sighting in a total of 59 different arrow combinations. And I collected all the data, ran it through Archer's Advantage, and came up with some pretty interesting stuff. Well, at least I find it interesting. I hope that you guys do also. This information basically allowed me to make a whole series of different things that I could talk about over arrows and things that I learned. And it, throughout this series, I'm probably going to leak a handful of different videos that are coming on later in the series. But if you guys have a video that you wanna see and you think would be interesting with the data that I collected, leave a comment down below and I'll see if I can make another video, or if I have that video in the queue, I'll let you guys know, and hopefully I get all the information that you guys want, and some more information that I want. Another thing with this series is, I'm not gonna throw a whole bunch of like fancy B-roll throughout the portion of me talking. I'm gonna keep these videos fairly easy to edit, and I think B-roll is kind of going to wash out a lot of the good information that I'm going to have here. So a lot of what I'm gonna be doing is talking to the camera, presenting graphs probably over here, and just explaining my thoughts and the graphs and the numbers that I found. So I shot a handful of different arrows throughout this test, but for the bulk of these tests, I actually used the exact same arrow. And the nice thing about using the exact same arrow is I'm able to control that arrow. And then in order to get different weights, I used the gold tip fact weight system. So I was threading 20 grain weights through the back and I was just stacking those up through the arrow. And I was able to get from 350 grains with a custom field tip that I made all the way up to 980 grains and able to get how that weight reacted on the exact same arrow. And what one of the main things I did find through this is that for the information that I'm presenting today, Weight is weight. So today I am presenting stuff on velocity, momentum, and kinetic energy. What I found is that no matter where that weight is in the arrow, you're still getting the same number. So if I have a 20% FOC, a 0% FOC, or like a negative 5% FOC, your mass is your mass. So your velocity is always going to be what your velocity is at that mass. No matter where I put that weight to get that 980 grains, it's always going to end up with the exact same velocity coming out of my bow. And this will be shown in a later video. Before I ran this test, I would always use an online arrow calculator to figure out how fast a specific arrow is going to be shot out of my bow. And after this test, I'm telling you that that is not correct. Okay, so a standard arrow calculator graph is going to look like this and you can see that it's linearly decreasing and the problem with this graph is the fact that it doesn't take into account the efficiency of your cam and the shape of your cam which is tied into efficiency so this is what the velocity would look like on an arrow calculator and this is what the momentum would look like and then this is what the kinetic energy would look like with that same velocity graph as you can see in the momentum and the kinetic energy graph is it's parabolic. So there's a peak to each one of these and then it falls off. For the momentum, you can see that your peak arrow weight is gonna be right around the 680 grain mark, which is going to give you somewhere in the realm of 220 feet per second on this arrow calculator. But you can also see that your peak kinetic energy is gonna be right around the 470 grain arrow mark, which in that case is gonna give you right around 290 feet per second. So your max kinetic energy arrow is not the same as your max momentum arrow. And once again, that is with an online calculator that you would just Google search and use to check your arrow speed. But what I found is that these arrow calculators are completely wrong. This graph shows my bow, and this is going to be specific to my bow, with seven different arrows at two different draw weights. And this is what the actual arrow weight versus velocity graph looks like. So as you can see, this graph is not linearly decreasing. This graph is exponentially decreasing, or at least the exponential function as a trend line fits this graph best in Excel. 
And you can see on these graphs that I have an R-squared value of dang near one. So it's a pretty, pretty good fit throughout the whole gamut of arrows that I shot. And this graph will have two lines. The blue line is my bow at 70 and three quarters pound. And the red line is my bow at 59.9 pounds. So you can see that the graph is pretty much the same no matter what your draw weight is. And that's showing you that this is based off your cam, not so much your draw weight. So another interesting thing that I found is that yes, this graph works to find your arrow velocity at two different draw weights, but for your bow, in order to find the velocity of a whole bunch of different arrows at a whole bunch of different draw weights, you can actually use a graph that is broke down as arrow grain weight per pound of draw. This graph is gonna show that the red and the blue line for the 70 and three quarter pound draw bow and the 59.9 pound draw bow with the exact same cam system of my prime rival line up pretty much perfectly. So what this is saying is that in order to find or estimate the velocity of my bow at 350 grains, rather than using 350 grains, you actually use 5.5 grains per pound for the 70 pound draw weight. And in order to find that, you just take your arrow weight and divide it by your pounds of draw weight. The reason I say that using an exponentially decreasing graph versus your online arrow calculator graph is this. You can see in this graph that the blue line is your calculated speed using an online arrow calculator, and the exponentially decreasing line is the one that I found for my bow. So looking at this graph and zooming in a little bit, you can see that the calculated weight from an online calculator and the exponentially decreasing curve that I collected off of my bow actually begin separating around 493 grains. So what that means is anything over 493 grains of arrow weight, for my bow at least, is going to be increasingly inaccurate as I go up from 493. Once again though, this grains per pound graph that I found for my bow is going to be different for your bow. Now, how much different is hard to say. It's all based off of cam design. But even if you wanted to get a little bit better estimate than what you're finding online, if you use the equation from this graph, you're gonna be closer, generally speaking, above 490 grains than a linearly decreasing graph. But what I would encourage you to do is take three arrows, take five, you could take seven, you could even take more than what I did here and graph your own bow. This is gonna give you a better idea of your performance at different arrow weights. And then from that information, you can do calculations such as momentum and kinetic energy. And then you could also see some different numbers and estimate some different numbers for downrange ballistics. The next thing I wanna talk about is really in age old conversation in the archery industry and it's kinetic energy and momentum. First, I wanna start by defining kinetic energy and momentum. Now, if you Google both of these, this is what you find. Kinetic energy, energy which a body possesses by virtue of being in motion. Momentum, the quantity of motion of a moving body measured as a product of its mass and velocity. Now, when I read these definitions and I feel like I have a decent understanding, I felt like they didn't tell you very much. So the way I break it down is kinetic energy is how hard something hits, momentum is how hard it is to stop something. With the information that I collected on my velocity, I had the ability to graph the kinetic energy and momentum of my bow at all of these different arrow weights. And this is what the momentum graph looks like. You can see that from the range of 350 grains on up to 980 grains, my bow will vary from 0.5 slug feet per second on up to 0.88 slug feet per second. So this is a 180% increase in arrow weight, which in turn I saw a 38% decrease in velocity, but I also saw a 74% increase in momentum. So what this is saying is that your percentage increase in momentum is actually quicker than your percentage decrease in velocity. What this is telling me is that your bow likes heavier arrows. And this graph, is the kinetic energy of my bow from 350 grains up to 980 grains. And this graph is showing me that throughout that same 180% increase in arrow weight and the 38% increase in velocity, you're only seeing 8% increase in kinetic energy. 
Now, one of the things that has been tricky with all of this kinetic energy and momentum info is I feel like there hasn't been a great way of quantifying it. So I don't know what 0.5 slug feet per second of momentum looks like versus 0.8 slug feet per second momentum. Is it going to correlate to three inches more penetration, one inch more penetration? These are all things that are hard to determine without performing some more tests. I'm going to have a video later in this series, which is hopefully going to help quantify the difference in those two values. What all this information leads me to, and something I've thought for a long time, probably gonna be kind of controversial, is that kinetic energy in archery is useless. What I think it is useful for is finding the efficiency of your bow. And generally, most of us don't even know how efficient our bow is. We just know that the arrow goes through the animal or it stops in the animal. But if we were wanting to find the efficiency of our bow, you would have to create a draw force curve like this one, find the area under that curve, which was this, and take your calculated kinetic energy and divide it by the area under your curve, like this, to get this efficiency. Now what's, what that is telling me is that the stored energy in my bow is not all being transferred to the arrow. So with your stored energy number, you can actually get a graph like this one, which is my stored energy and my kinetic energy throughout different arrow weights. And obviously the stored energy stays the same, but your kinetic energy is going to change. And with this graph, you can see that your bow is actually more efficient the more weight that you put in an arrow, which this has been known for a very long time and it's not new information, but it's kind of cool to see it in graph form. And this graph is just another way to see it in graphical form. This is your efficiency versus your arrow weight. And once again, this is showing that your bow is more efficient the more weight you put on your arrow. But you can see that it is kind of trending parabolic. So there's a point where it's going to peak and there's a point where it's gonna to begin to fall. For my bow, it's far past 980 grain arrow. So all this stuff is cool, but the reason that I don't think kinetic energy is important when it comes to archery is the fact that I don't feel that archery equipment is killing an animal using kinetic energy. I think that a bow is killing by momentum, not by kinetic energy. I think that a rifle is designed to kill by kinetic energy, not momentum. Now, the best way I have to explain this, I think, and I think it makes sense, and I'm hoping I can portray it in a way that makes sense to you guys. The outer diameter of my gold tip pierce tours is 245 thousandths of an inch. So 0.245. The diameter of a six millimeter bullet is 0.243. When you shoot a six millimeter bullet, now I just picked a random bullet online. For this example, I picked a 58 grain varmint bullet, which is designed to shoot coyotes on down. This bullet out of a 243 win is moving from the muzzle at 3,925 feet per second. And it has kinetic energy of 1,984 foot-pounds. This isn't anywhere near what an arrow produces. And these bullets are designed to penetrate into the animal and in a perfect case scenario, stop on the backside of the animal on the hide. And when it does that, that shows you that all of the energy of that bullet was transferred into that animal. And bullets are using that energy to kill that animal. So my second example of a bullet would be using a 17 caliber bullet shot out of a 17 Hornet. Now this specific bullet has a diameter of 0.172, so significantly lower than the outer diameter of my arrow. It's a 20 grain varmint bullet, so something that you would use maybe for like prairie dogs or smaller varmints like that. It's being shot out of the muzzle at 3,650 feet per second with a kinetic energy of 592 foot-pounds. Once again, not anywhere near what I was getting with my bow. The max kinetic energy I found with my bow through the whole gamut of arrows was right around 88 foot-pounds. So one of the main reasons I don't feel that we are killing by kinetic energy in archery is the fact that what we want is a full pass-through. And the further it buries into the ground on the other side is better for us generally. And when it buries further into the ground, you're actually transferring less of that kinetic energy into the animal. And how far it buries into the ground on the other side is a result of momentum. And that's why I say we're killing by momentum. We're using a sharp broadhead to cut two holes in the animal and we want it to travel through the animal and into the ground on the other side. What we want is two holes. 
we don't want it to stop on the back side of the hide. We want it to cut through the first side, through the second side, and out the back. This is going to give us the best opportunity to attract this animal and the most blood. Now looking at the kinetic energy and momentum graphs that I showed you for my bow, they do go somewhat hand in hand throughout this range of arrows. What I'm saying is yes, kinetic energy is something that we've used as a standard throughout the industry. Kinetic energy is related to momentum, where throughout my range of arrows I was seeing a larger momentum with a larger kinetic energy, but I think we should be talking more about momentum. I think it tells more of a story. And with this momentum, I think we also need to be considering arrow velocity, which would impact the time that the arrow takes to get to the animal and can be important in an animal jumping the string and sound, which can also be important in an animal jumping in the string. Now I'm going to break down velocity in a future video and hopefully show you guys some cool calculations on arrow speed and animals jumping the string. With that being said, I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope the information was digestible. I know I'm learning a whole bunch of information as I'm going through these tests and I'm trying to wrap my head around it and present it to you guys in a way that you understand it, in a way that I talk myself through it and understand it. If you guys have ideas for future videos or information you want me to dive into a little bit more that you saw in this video, comment down below. Also make sure you're liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Once again, this is a whole series. I'm going to be presenting a lot of interesting information. Well, interesting to me, hopefully interesting to you, but this is a series, so follow along. Yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Hope you're getting out there and shooting your bow. Catch you guys on the next one. See ya.